or something. All right, here we go. It's under Adrian Weatherly. That's why. Okay. What's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with the latest episode of the Team Building Podcast, where you learn how to build a dominant real estate team in your market. And we have a couple of phenomenal guests with us today. They run one of the top teams in the country, definitely one of the top teams in their state of Hawaii. Some of you in the audience might already be familiar with them because they've been around for a while and producing at a high level for a long time. So we're talking about doing 100 plus transactions a year for at least seven years, uh, stepping out of production and some of the fun things they're doing with ISAs. So we've got a lot of stuff to get into. So First of all, the man, the myth, the legend, Jeff Cohn. What's up today? Hey, super jacked about the call. I'm excited to have you guys on as guests today. We don't usually get the pleasure of having, I think we have four people now uh, with streaming our videos. So for anyone that listens, know there's always an option if you want to see our beautiful faces. Uh, if you just go over to YouTube, you can watch these videos. Or if you're watching live on Facebook, please make sure to comment and ask questions to our guests. That's one of the big value adds with our podcast as we give you that ability. So thanks you guys both for coming on today. We're looking forward to diving deep on team building structures and everything fun and successful that you've done so far in the beautiful state of Hawaii. Thanks. Adrian, thank, you. thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. So Adrian, let's start with you because uh, obviously the team kind of started uh, with yours and then Atelio came on later as a listing partner. And now you guys are both out of production. I want to briefly go over just the timeline of, of how that went down. So. Catch us up, just a 60-second bio, kind of where you guys are at, and then we'll talk about how you got to where you're at right now. Okay, so currently we have five buyer agents and uh, two listing partners and a admin team. We've got seven virtual assistants, and then let's see, one, two, three. We have four administrative people that are in the office supporting. Uh, last year we did 83 million, and this year we're looking to close probably right between, right between 90 to 95 million, depending on um, timing of the closings. So Very how many units is that? Mark. Adrian, how many units? Um, probably close up about 180 units. Yeah. Nice. And then Atilio, just to catch us up a little bit on on how you came to be a part of the team, and then what your what your guys' roles are, and how you split up the roles. Okay, so I was wandering in the desert for 40 days. No, 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 wait, that was Moses. Never mind. No, uh, <laughs> my story is this: is uh, I was a, I was doing short sales, so I was I, I consider myself a junkyard dog of a realtor because I was just working with the worst situation that sellers could be in, and I got a call early in the morning probably about three, three or four o'clock in the morning from a Florida agent uh, looking to refer his retiring high ranking uh, buddy in the military who had a golf course listing. Well, I'd never done a traditional listing with marketing and all of that. It was more of like, hey, let me help you avoid foreclosure. So I called up my broker and said, who are the top three realtors? Interesting, in our, in our brokerage at the time, it was Remax and interesting, uh, it was all women, three women. So I just went through the, the serious brainiac process of gathering information and coming to this highly intelligent decision. I picked the lady that was closest to the office of where I lived at, and that was Adrian. So, uh, and then I called her up and said, hey, how about we partner up on this deal? I've never done a traditional listing. Um, we'll go 50-50, and then I had a whole bunch of other listings, and I said, why don't we just, can I just come on board and be your listing partner? And, and uh I'll let Adrian take it from there if you want to. And here we are today. We're partners. Yep. Yeah, Adrian, what was the next steps and what, what did that initial couple of years look like? So um, we went through an interview process and it was didn't look anything like what we do today. And actually, Attilio had all, he was all organized with all of these questions. I think I still have the list of questions that he had asked. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was I realized that, okay, you know, we both have a lot of listings. And um, our admin is not going to be able to uh, support us fully. So we needed somebody like to manage the listings and manage that process. So when it's uh, we also brought on a listing manager as well at the same time. And that was that was 10 years ago. And what quickly happened was it wasn't the one plus one equals two, but more so like one plus one equals three. And we were able to really grow our listing inventory tremendously um, together versus us, you know, working apart. So we quickly grew to, you know, consistently carry about between 50 to 60 listings as opposed to maybe 10 to 15 each. Yeah. 
And what's interesting about you guys, if I recall correctly, uh, you guys are you're servicing all the islands, and so you have a unique situation that a lot of us don't run into, which is you can't necessarily get to all of your potential sellers in person. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a little bit you have a little bit more of a freedom. So you guys actually shot a really nice like listing presentation video. Do you guys still use that? Uh, we we will we will send it out to actually sellers that are off island. We do have a lot of clientele that don't actually live here. And just like you guys, we do a lot of video conferencing and um, can digitally meet with our clients. So sending out the listing presentation, it's kind of like that that preview, you know, something that they can kind of get uh, a taste of what our team is like and, you know, in, in anticipation of doing that um, the video conference or just meeting us in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool. And then just because you guys are partners in, in the team, uh, just break down i mean you're both out of production so it's not like one of you is the okay. visionary and one of you is the listing partner anymore so what, how do you guys split up what you guys are both doing for the team are you guys overseeing different sides of the business atilio you want to jump in on this well you know i think barbara corcoran she uh we coached with her for a little bit and obviously she's uh, still endorsing us today but I, I like the way that she put it you know in she had a similar partnership in her business, and one one partner was the container, and one was the expander. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm 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 the hey, wait a minute, let's actually look at what's in our checkbook before we start writing checks. And Adrian's like, well, there's checks in there, we can still write checks. <laughs> and so she's the expand the expander visionary, and or she would be more of the strategist, and I'm more of the tactician. So mm. that's kind of a general, you know, 30,000 foot level of how we divide our roles. And um, um, we just, we we have different disc profiles that are complementary. She's a high D and I'm a high I, if you haven't already told, uh, figured that out yet. But um, um, I think that was it. And then, uh, you know, what I want to share with the listeners is from the, be this, we didn't know what we didn't know in the beginning, but we can look back on it because hindsight's 2020. 20. And I will tell you this, we just coached with one of our, our our referral partners. Go, don't be greedy. When you're building a business, look for strategic partnerships. And uh, because there's always somebody that's where you want to be or knows more than you and don't do it alone. I, I think that's that's been the key part of our personalities is like from the beginning, um, I was willing to submit my ego to the fact that it's Team Lally, not Team Leonardi. And Adrian, let the listeners know from the beginning, what was the split and who made the suggestion on how we split this business? Oh, so in the beginning, I mean, I didn't know what I didn't know. And how, how we had it set up was that if the lead came from, you know, the marketing of the team, it was 60-40. Uh, and then if he had brought in the business, it was 50-50. And uh, what was happening was that, you know, as the team grew and we're, you know, trying to, you know, bring on admin and support, the, um, but that was, was not working well. And Atilio was actually the one that said, hey, um, this, we're gonna, you're going to go bankrupt. <laughs> we got to make some changes. And actually, you know, he had started to even contribute if there was certain types of advertising or programs that we wanted to be part of, you know, he would contribute. So even before we were uh, partners, official partners, in the business, he was already acting like he was a part owner in the business. Mm, interesting. I love it. And we've got a bunch of people watching live. Actually, funny, Brandy Salazar jumped on and says, hey, Adrian, um, <laughs> which is kind of funny. And then apparently there's a Matthew Lally runs something called the Lally Team in upstate New York. So what's up, Matthew? Thanks for uh, for joining us. Yeah. Funny. Um, so, uh, so let's jump into the ISA thing a little bit. Tell us a little bit. We know that what the structure of the basic team is. We know we've got buyers, buyer specialists, listing specialists. So tell us about the ISA role, Adrian, and what their, what their main function is, and then we'll talk about kind of how it fits into the structure of things. So the main function is for, um, for them to be that, that first point of contact, because that's all that their focus is, right, is to be connecting with our, you know, our past clients, our current day-to-days, and the inbound uh, people that, you know, it, it costs a lot more money to generate an inbound lead versus doing the cold calls or the circle dials and so forth. So, you know, just that, that, first, that first voice and um, 
to nurture and to decide like, okay, are they ready for an appointment with you know, one of our agents or do we need to take them a little bit further along process before introducing them to the agent? Because the agents, you know, they're, they're busy and they can drop the ball and, um, and then the client moves on. So, yeah, yeah. so that so was So you're using, you have a single ISA today, you're interviewing two additional ISAs, so you'll have a total of three. Correct. Those people end up coming yes. on. Right now you're using them primarily as lead scrubbers and then also for sifting back through your older database of past clients or past leads that you had registered. Yes, and they're also competing with the agents. So the, the phones ring all at the same time. And if the agents don't pick it up, the ISA is gonna be able to snag that, that potential yeah. buyer or seller and then decide are they ready for an appointment or do I need to put so them in more of a nurture role. If, if an ISA scrub lead ends up getting handed mm -hmm. over to one of your agents, does the split uh -huh. change uh -huh. versus the agent yes. taking the lead and scrubbing it themselves? What Would you mind sharing with yes. our audience what that sure. looks like? So it comes out of the agent side um, on the buyer side, instead of them getting a 50-50 split, if it's an ISA scrubbed, it, they get 40%. And then on the list side, instead of the 30, they get 20. So okay. it just, you know, it comes out of so the agent side. So it costs 10% if they mm -hmm. are handed. So is that if it's been touched at any point or if they've set an appointment? Because I've seen this in the past where an ISA has touched the lead at some point, but it wasn't ready to do anything mm -hmm. for six months down the road, and then the agent finds it six months later and converts it and then the team lead says well hey it was touched at one point how does it work for you guys oh, yeah no the isa has to have set the appointment and nurtured okay. so it's like it depends on who's who's nurturing that that person and building that relationship mm -hmm. okay so and then typically the isa is still in contact with the client even throughout the process as the backstop in case you know the agent they can't get a hold of the agent. They can always get a hold of our ISA as well. And are they all licensed? Your ISA? Uh, yes. Oh. Yes. Cool. So it's almost like client care services. Exactly. That's neat. And then you'd mentioned off air um, talking about virtual assistants. I think you said you had seven. Would you mind sharing with our audience what they do? Sure. Um, our our VAs actually they, they will do anything that you can can be done on a computer or a phone. Uh, some of them will. Oh, hold on a second. I've got an airplane going over. Attilio, <laughs> you're, you're fine. Watch you. We don't hear it. You hear okay anymore? <laughs> okay. So um, our VAs are basically their assistants to our admins in the office um, for our listing manager he has a full-time virtual assistant and that helps, helps him with a lot of the MLS helping with the showings helping with follow-up we have virtual assistants that will go through our emails and filter out what needs us our attention or maybe someone else we have a an assistant that manages our calendar that books all of our guests because we have a radio show so he's our you know our producer mm -hmm. they they do our social media. They help us with marketing. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Pretty much anything that can be done on a phone or a computer, they're doing for us. However, you know, you got to take the time to train them and put that time into them in order to get, you know, that level of service out of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Love it. Very, very cool. So, so let's talk about leadership a little bit and how how do you guys. I know you have the the kind of the expander and container, you know, just personality types and how you guys interrelate. How do you how do you guys structure your leadership? Are you both meeting with all of your agents on a regular basis? Do each of you take certain roles? And how do you uh, how do you kind of split up the leadership responsibilities? So we have uh, we do have a sales director, and he has taken on a majority of that accountability, the weekly check-ins and this. Uh, working his own side. And what we do is we make sure that we, every Friday we have a, a lunch with a different team member and it's all about them and their why and how can we support them and what's going on with them. So um, that's been, that's been successful and it's enjoyable, you know, to, to talk more like on a personal level and you know like how like how can we help them to achieve 
their goals and, and support them with their family and you know whatever's going on in their lives. So who's responsible to hold the sales manager accountable? Who do they report to? Oh, that that would be us. Every Monday, well, who's we us? Our sales manager. Oh, you two together? And myself. Uh -huh. Okay, yep. so together you're holding that direct report accountable. And then what about the ISAs? Who's yep. holding them accountable? Um, well, that would be, more, I think, more Attilio on his, uh, he's he's taking on that, that project. He, why don't you jump in, Attilio, on your, on the ISA? Yeah, so we're... <laughs> We're such in an odd role because I'm the one that's running off the mouth here and you got to shut up every once in a while. And so it's it's kind of neat to be able to just sit back and let Adrian speak. He's a super sharp <laughs> lady. The But it, as far as all the coaching and training, I probably take more of a lead role in the one-on-one -on -one aspect of that, of the divide and conquer. But, um, you know, full disclosure for everybody listening right now, the ISA team thing, that's a new thing for us. And here's the here's the big thing as as that we've learned. And this is true for any position that, that, you're, that you have on your team. If you don't have it, then you are it. If you don't have an mm -hmm. ISA, you're an ISA. If you don't have an admin, you're an admin. And you can just go through all the different positions within the team. So what we found is that, um, and this is also what we learned about bringing on an ISA. And, and I tell people who are listening right now, do not think that it's some panacea that's going to solve all your problems. Because if, if you're de completely depending on an ISA team to solve all your problems, then you, as a team, you got bigger problems than that. It should be something that's there to enhance your business and help you take it to the next level. Because two things we've learned about this ISA role and this ISA team we're putting in place, it's going to be the biggest game changer in our business, but it's also going to be the biggest disruption, especially for a team that's already in play because the agents are used to the lead pull happening a certain way. And now we're totally doing a 180 on that and letting the ISAs handle all the lead flow. Um, what it's helping us do with leadership, it's leveraging our leadership because now you have these people that say, hey, if I flip this lead over to you and you drop the ball, you're affecting how I feed my family. Whereas opposed to it's just Adrian and I at the top. Now you got somebody else involved that's watching you and, and we're getting more of that. You can't expect what you don't inspect. Now we're having multiple people do that with an ISA team. Love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, in, it's in essentially internal accountability, and you're building a team that can, to a certain extent, manage itself, which then cuts down on the management burden on you guys. So it's it's making sure the trains run on time rather than getting out there and pushing mm -hmm. the caboose. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, and then I want to add with the, with the VAs, you know, we've, we've been working with VAs. I, I will tell you the mindset for, for uh, working with the VAs started with Adrian way in the beginning. We were working with a guy named Isaac out of India. And no no voice to voice connection. Everything was over the email. We realized after a while they were just subbing in people. So we're like, why are we having to train Isaac on how to do this again? It's a different mm -hmm. Isaac. And so we moved to the Philippines uh, with VAs there. And I'll tell you the number one thing with VAs again, it's not the panacea. If you're looking for a virtual assistant to solve all your issues, you got bigger problems than a VA. Not having a VA is that you get out of them what you pour into them. I mean, I, I, I've I got a VA that's been with us for seven years, and I spent an hour just the other day talking about the importance of making sure that our numbers reflected in MLS are all under Adrian so that our marketing shows us as a top team and how critical that is. And I spent an hour going over that with her and just the whole rigmarole that we have to go through to make sure that we show up as uh, as the number one team in Hawaii because that's critical for our marketing. Yeah. Right. If you're not the top team and you're saying we're the top team, then you're lying. Right. So yeah. We want to make sure that that, accurate, that information matches our marketing. Yeah. And yeah. then also Didn't one of me. our one of our VAs, uh, they they flew over and they spent a whole month with us and uh, at, my at, house. You know, at at Atilio's house. <laughs> wow, that's <laughs> and awesome. She was actually one of our. She's an ISA VA, so yeah. we're more of like a lead scrubber or nurturer, client care. So yeah. that was um, that was a really great experience to be That's able to awesome. host her and train her and, and spend time with her. One thing I don't talk about a lot, of, I actually happen to own a virtual assistant company in the Philippines called Thousand Calls a Day. And we yeah. have 150 full-time VAs. And it's amazing to me the people that choose to hire us and think that if they've never made expired calls or FISBO calls or circle prospecting calls, they can hire someone in the Philippines to do that then that person will be responsible mm -hmm. for generating a lead. And then they have the fantasy that they then will be able to overturn, you know, overcome the objections of that lead and go on in a presentation and get the listing. 
when in fact, to the very point you guys have been making, it's really there just to accelerate something that's already been proven. So when people think that they can hire a VA just to solve all their problems, you're not going to be able to. And I love, Attilio, what you said in terms of pouring your heart and soul into that VA. You'll only get as much out of them as you put into them. And that same rule would apply to your admin staff and to your agents and your significant other and so on and so forth. Yeah. So I think a lot of times people think they can just hire someone, throw some money at them, and they're going to solve all their problems, and that's not the case. That's true. Yeah, and, well, and, cool, and guys. I want to put in there for our, for our listeners, do not call Agent and I for a VA. Call Jeff because it, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's a distraction. That is not the business we're in. We're great at, at, at finding them, training them, and hiring them, but we are not in the business. Of, of finding VAs for people. Call, call yeah, Jeff. Shoot over to 1000-100-callsaday.com yeah. and you guys can set up a demo yeah. call there. Matt, I do want to make quick mention. Uh, we have a few events coming up. We have our first regional uh, team building workshop in Miami, Florida, January 15th and 16th. If you guys would be interested in attending, I'll buy you tickets. Atilio and Adrian would love to have you there. Um, it's just an all-day workshop talking about teams and my team's gone from 70 to 700 sides in the last six years. We'll do about 140 million this year in volume. And that's with a lot more agents than you guys have. Our average sales price is like 220,000. And so we're gonna be doing that um, in January. And then we're also gonna be hosting regional masterminds or sorry, workshops in conjunction with Boomtown Unite in Charleston. And that's I believe in April. And then also Berkshire Hathaway has a event in Las Vegas, their national yearly convention. And we're gonna be doing a regional in Vegas as well. So if you guys want more information on events, just go out to EliteRealEstateSystems.com, click on events, and it'll show all of our upcoming events that we have. Awesome. And then uh, Adrian, how do people connect with you, especially if they have referrals for you guys? Well, you can always just go to, uh, to TeamLally.com. I believe we have a, a link on our page for referrals. And uh, believe it or not, we're running a little referral contest right now. And you can win a trip for two to Hawaii. Do we get to we get stay at Atelier's yeah. house? <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys can stay in my house. house. No, no, no. <laughs> I want to. I have no, a no, in a, in a hotel. Okay. All right, good. <laughs> Uh, okay, guys. Well, that was awesome. Uh, so if anybody enjoyed uh, this particular podcast, make sure to leave uh, a rating and review on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, whichever uh, app that you guys use. And, and make sure you give Adrian and Atilio a shout out. Thank them for their time and their contribution for opening up about their business. Guys, thank you so much. We appreciate your guys' time and jumping on. I know it's early for you, for you guys out in Hawaii, so we really, really appreciate that. And for everybody that's watching uh, live on Facebook, Stick around. Um, just make sure to, to join us next Wednesday. We've got amazing guests as always. Jeff, thank you so much. And uh, everybody that's watching, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, you guys. Thank you.